So records. Let's start assessing the spacing in terms of crowding. Mild, moderate, or severe. Mild on the upper, moderate on the lower. I usually use three, six, and nine millimeters as my thresholds. Under three millimeters, mild. Three to six, moderate. Six to nine, severe. Over nine, I need to know the total discrepancy because I'm considering extractions. Okay? In terms of class one, class two, what are we looking for? At this point, class two. Okay? Let's look at the overbite. We're about 80% closed. There's one inside that's only 50%, but definitely big overbite. And it's about a four millimeter class two. Okay? Now, in terms of the set, you know we have a class two patient. What are we looking for in the set to know if it's gonna be an easy or a more difficult to correct class two? So we're looking at the direction of growth, exactly. Clockwise are easier or more difficult to correct the class two. So a clockwise grower is harder to correct because even if growth happens, it happens in a more vertical dimension. We call them sometimes hyperdivergent versus hypodivergent, which is a lot more easier to correct. In terms of his hyper versus hypodivergent, is he leaning towards one or the other, or he's more of a normal? We call them normal because he's not leaning towards one or the other. He's within the normal limits, though, which means no harm. The next thing we're discussing with class two, and I'll come back to the step, is how else can we correct the class two if its growth doesn't give us 100% of the potential? We can do what to the upper molars? You can de-rotate them. If you start with a rotated upper molar, by de-rotating the molar, you actually bring them to a more class one. Okay? What's the feature we're looking at the upper molars to know if de-rotation will be beneficial? It's the oblique ridge from the distal buccal cusp to the palatal cusp. That ridge right here needs to point to the first premolar and canine region. So if I extrapolate this, this is pointing to almost the second premolar. Even worse if you actually draw a straight line. So would B rotation help this patient? Absolutely. So if I get a couple of millimeters of B rotation and a couple of millimeters of growth, how easy would it be to correct this four millimeter plus two? Fairly easy. So how do I need to start this case to get that molar to derotate, passive or active? Ideally, we want active start. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and come back for more Monday tips coming up. Have a great day.